So in this video we want to look at some of the properties of vector spaces and this this set of four properties here are kind of properties we've already looked at. What's nice about them is that these are properties that can be proven without knowing anything at all about what objects in the vector space look like and they can be proven using just the axioms or properties of a vector space that we already established in the first video and and even back in homework 13 video set so th these seem obvious but again the idea is because they can be proven using using just the properties of the vector space it means that these are things that will be true even for a vector space that we haven't discovered yet we could find a set of objects that forms a vector space um, that's brand new, nobody's ever seen it before, and these are properties that we would automatically know applied to that vector space. So this first property says that the scalar zero times any vector in the vector space will equal the zero vector in the vector space. A scalar times the zero vector will always equal the zero vector. And this one says that negative one times a vector will always be the opposite of the vector or the additive inverse of V. So this is really identifying a way to get the additive inverse. And then this one says that if you take a scalar times a vector and that product equals zero, then either the scalar is zero or V is the zero vector in the vector space. So again, these are nice because they can all be proven using just the axioms or properties of a vector space and without even knowing what V looks like. So an example proof for the first one that uses just the properties of the vector space. This is the only proof we'll look at and I thought about putting a couple of these in the homework for you but I decided to be nice and not do that to you this time. But to do this to do the proof of the first one using just vector space properties what you want to notice is that if you take zero times any vector plus zero times any vector you can apply the distributive property which is one of the properties of a vector space and then if you do that you get zero plus zero is zero so you get zero times a vector plus zero times a vector equals zero times a vector so we can use the transitive property of equality to set this equal to this which we do here on line one and then we add the same thing to both sides so in this case we add the uh, additive inverse of zero times a vector to both sides negative zero v negative zero v is how you denote the additive inverse of zero times v so we add the additive inverse of zero times v to both sides we then use the associative property to regroup these. So initially these two are grouped. Now we regroup it using the associative property. And because this is the additive inverse of this, the sum of these two uh, vectors is going to add up to the zero vector in the vector space. And here we have a vector plus its inverse. So it will add up to the uh, zero vector or the, add the additive identity in the vector space. And then here we have a vector plus the zero vector, but the zero vector is the additive identity in the vector space. So we know when we add these two vectors together, we just get zero times V. And this then proves that zero times V is going to be the zero vector or additive identity in the vector space. And again, all four of these properties can be proven in a similar type of a process where you just apply the vector space properties to drive the proof. There is a practical implication to this first property that I'll just mention briefly. This is really a, a kind of the corollary to this first one is that a zero vector, the zero vector must be a member of every vector space. And, and the reason we know that is vector spaces must be closed under scalar multiplication and zero is a scalar. So that means because I have a scalar times a vector in the vector space equals the zero vector in the vector space, that guarantees the zero vector or additive identity must be in a vector space. And, and so the practical implication is, is, is if you have a vector, uh, let's say we have a vector that looks like this, so here's a subset of R3. I have A, 0, 
a plus 1. So this is a subset of R3, right? So say, is the set of all vectors that look like this a vector space or a subspace, right? A subspace is just a subset of vectors that themselves form a vector space. And here, without doing anything, other, I can really easily, with a, I can, doing almost nothing, I can easily show that this isn't a vector space. And the idea is that you can't get the zero vector from this. The only way to get zero, the zero vector for R3 is to have the vector 0, 0, 0. And we would need to let A equal 0 and to get a 0 here. But if A is 0, then here I get 0 plus 1 is 1. The only way to get a 0 in this position is for A to be negative 1. But if we put negative 1 for A, we get 0. And here I get a negative 1. So this is, this is an example of a subset, a subset of R3 that can't contain the zero vector. And that indicates then that this isn't going to be a subspace. Um, simply by sh demonstrating that there is a way for it, that there is no way for it to contain the zero vector. So this first property kind of has that practical implication. Hey, a vector space must contain the zero vector. And if you can demonstrate that a subset of a vector space doesn't contain the zero vector, then you found a way to pr prove that that subset is not itself a subspace.